Design of ultrasound transducer includes many categories depending on its applications. In this video, we only focus on the acoustic area, why a transducer may include multiple layers, and how it behaves when connecting to an electrical driving circuit. An ultrasound transducer is a device that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy in the ultrasonic range that bounces off the target back to make echoes. A transducer is composed of a case or housing, backing layer, piezoelectric crystal or PZT, acoustic lens, and matching layer. Its acoustic beam field looks like this. Post-echo method-based applications. These applications, including imaging and non-destructive detection, require wide bandwidth. A short pulse is sent to the target and echoes are captured for signal processing or imaging. For example, when a single cycle electrical pulse is applied to the transducer, ideally the output is also a single cycle acoustic pulse. In reality, a much longer pulse with ring down will be obtained instead. Q factor. Q factor is the inverse of percentage bandwidth. If a piece of ceramic has a high Q factor of 1000, it simply means, given a quick impulse excitation, we will oscillate about 1000 cycles before the vibration dies out. Most piezoelectric materials have a high Q factor. For imaging, we prefer a bandwidth higher than 50% or a Q factor lower than 2 or 3. So the first task in design is to use a proper backing layer or layers for damping or preventing backward emission, that is lowering the Q factor. A material with a high acoustic impedance will do the job. However, too much damping will also decrease the sensitivity dramatically. Therefore, a good design needs a good bandwidth with a reasonable sensitivity. You can easily see the differences of excitation waveforms with different Q factors. Matching layers. Transducers are based on PZT kind of ceramic or single crystal material, which have a high acoustic impedance above 30 megareals. Targets such as water and human tissue have much lower impedance of 1 megareal and 1.5 megareals correspondingly. If we use the PZT transducer directly on the target, the acoustic energy will only be reflected on the surface of the transducer, but not penetrate the target. Therefore, we need a matching layer or layers in the transducer to provide the required acoustic impedance gradient for the acoustic energy from the transducer to smoothly penetrate the target, and for the reflected acoustic waves to smoothly return to the transducer for detection. Matching network. Since most cables and pulsers have an impedance of 50 ohms, it's important to design a transducer that can match the same impedance to prevent energy loss. For a small area transducer, an active material with a high dielectric constant is preferred. When a transducer's electrical properties are different from that of the circuit and cable, a matching network is needed to prevent reflections at each boundary. Most matching networks consist of inductors and capacitors either in series or shunt connection. Hope you've enjoyed this video.